Good morning. It is good to see you here, and for those of you that I can't see but I know are on, online with us this morning, it is it's great to be with you. I invite you, if you're able, to please stand for the reading of the Gospel this morning. Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came into what was his own, and his own people, they did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word, the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen the glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe when I was six or seven years old, my uncle gave me a flashlight for Christmas. This was a nice flashlight, a flashlight not to be entrusted to a six or seven year old young boy, not the red plastic kind that I had been used to going through a few dozen before I had reached the ripe old age of six or seven. This flashlight was silver and had settings. I felt that this was certainly a sign that I was moving into adulthood. It was solid, it was heavy, and my uncle even loaded the light maker with batteries. So from the moment I opened the gift, the light was in my hand. There was a little button that at the age of six or seven was really hard for me to push at the top of the settings. And when I was able to, that little button gave a jolt of light. light. I didn't even need to turn it on. That flashlight, it sat on my nightstand. I would use it in the darkness of the night when I heard something. Something I knew in my mind that was about to get me, the light would counteract anything that was coming for me. The silver flashlight went through countless packs of batteries and it went on many travels. The light was security as well as a reminder of my uncle. He too was a source of light for me. He would call each and every week to talk to my father, his brother. And when the human being on the other end, known as my uncle, would call and I would answer the phone, he would say, well, Timmy, how are you? Now, he was the only person that could ever get away with calling me that unforsaken name that was put together with my own. For I had to correct people, and don't try to call me Timmy because I will correct you too. My name is Tim. (laughs) My uncle talked slowly and he laughed a lot. My uncle gave me that flashlight, a source of light just as he was in my own. In our journey, we each have a person or a few people that represent light to us, as well as one light that gives us light for our life that we hear from the reading today. When we think of others, we should also look to ourselves as being light. We too can be light to ourselves as well as to others on the journey. Where does your light shine and where does light in your life come from today? Now, during this Christmas season, we continue to talk and to share about the journey. And while our focus is no longer on the journey to Bethlehem, it is the journey we are on with Jesus, the Word made flesh. The coming of Jesus, the Word, the light in the darkness, isn't limited to a time and a place with characters playing specific roles in open-haired stables in Bethlehem. The coming of Jesus isn't a one-time event that we commemorate and accomplish. 
by getting Mary and Joseph and Jesus to the stable and then back on their journey. The journey we join and continue to be on is the unfolding mystery and wonder of Emmanuel. God is with us. The story is about God. The story is about God's willingness to share life through light and to see how light travels great distances to illuminate the way, the path for the journey that we are all on individually and collectively. In that way, God shares God's desire to be in relationship, the desire to be light, and this hope-filled desire started long before Mary and Joseph reached their appointed destination, and shepherds were called as ushers to beckon the way for light and love in the world. The journey started long before a donkey ride. The journey started long before that story unfolded. The relationship God with all of humanity started from the very beginning. From the beginning, that is the way the gospel started for today. The author known as John takes us back, reminiscent, reminiscent of another beginning story, the creation narratives that we hear in Genesis, that begins in the beginning. And before the beginning, to a time before there were mountains and oceans, land and sky, light and darkness, the creative endeavor of words and images helps us to listen in for the way that God moves so distinctly and together and yet separate with intention, giving way to a great freedom for all people. The creation narrative gives insight to the details and to the relationship of God as well as God's intention to be in relationship with all people. The word through light, through the love of God made real in Jesus. God's willingness to be in relation is so evident and so transparent in the story, it comes like a beacon of light drawing one in as part of the new birth narrative in a time of deep darkness. John's birth narrative or the story of how God came to live in the world is much different than Matthew and Luke. It is mystical and filled with wonder, and it brings us just as many questions as answers. If you're reading with knowledge of how the story of the Incarnation goes, you might have to stumble a little bit. You might have to wonder, but what about the shepherds and angels? This is the way that God works to come into the world. What about the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger because there was no room? John's gospel proclamation doesn't listen or follow that pattern. Instead, goes in a much different direction to reveal the wonder of God made real in Jesus. Here there is the same story, told in a different way, one that moves beyond place and time and a starlight of hope, and is a starlight of hope, peace, joy, and love. The Word, the Word was in the beginning with God. And the word is like light, and that light is a light for all people. And this word, Jesus Christ, took on flesh and lived with us. Jesus' presence is made real when you hear it like this, because what it really is saying in a very simplistic way is the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Jesus moves in next door. Jesus comes so close that Jesus becomes like a new neighbor, a companion, a friend, someone who is there for you, someone who is watching as the light goes on and off. Jesus moving in next door is creating a new movement, a back and forth between households, a way of sharing. Jesus is my neighbor and lives right next to me. The writer invites us to join the relationship as neighbors and see where we fit into this story of belonging, this story of unfolding light, and how that light comes to meet us, to pierce and penetrate the darkness and move, bending into the corners and crevices of our lives, after all, Jesus is a light that no darkness can extinguish. 
This isn't a one and done. This isn't a date on the calendar, or it isn't a season to cherish and remember. This entry into the world takes on human form, flesh and blood and pain and rejection and even death to make way for life. And this movement, this movement stirs not only us, but a way of understanding God's work in a deeper way. John invites us to a time, time and time again, to see how we become part of this story that unravels right before us, and how we too become co-creators with God's story. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves this isn't something that we pulled off. This isn't something that we did. This is what God is doing for us. Like a flashlight in the night, shedding light in the darkness. So too is this beginning light and the word made flesh who joins us. This light continues to shine. Did you see it? Did you experience it? The experience requires a bit of lingering, and we certainly don't like to linger long. We, like many others, have to move along. We can't stay here. We can't stay because we have things to do and places to go. While the church stays in the season of Christmas for a bit, the world seems ready to move on. Christmas, along with its many created items, are now on sale wherever you go. You can find Christmas for half off, and it's in the clearance section of your local Target or Myers or Walmart. That understanding of the But if we limit that, of the If we limit that understanding of the incarnation to something that we can buy and purchase and consume, limits our understanding, it limits our interaction and understanding with the story and how we can become part of its unfolding nature. Like Jesus, the challenge is to go against the world, ushering in a way for God's story to be made known. And we have to be part of that resistance in the many ways in which we go against what the world is trying to sell us when it comes to Christmas, and instead begin to claim the story of the Incarnation for ourselves. But in that very statement, we must make a decision. Which story do we want to follow? Which story do we want to claim? It's as if the tension is timelessly embedded into God's story, God's determination to be known as light in the world, to be the world, word made flesh as a companion in the human struggle. And so God comes to us as light. I like how Jan Richardson captures this in the Christmas reflection that she shared, how the light comes. I cannot tell you how the light comes. What I know is that it is more ancient than imagining, that it travels across an astounding, astounding, astounding expanse to reach us, that it, love, that it loves searching out what is hidden, what is lost, what is forgotten, or in peril, or in pain. That it has a fondness for the body, for finding its way toward flesh, for tracing the edges of form, for shining forth through the eye, the hand, the heart. I cannot tell you how the light comes, but that it does, and that it will. That it works its way into the deepest dark that enfolds you, Though it may seem long ages in coming to arrive in a shape you did not foresee. And so may we this day turn ourselves toward it, 
May we lift our faces to let it find us. May we bend our bodies to follow the arc it makes. And may we open and open and open more still to the blessed light that comes. Jan Richardson tells the story of how light comes as well as how we greet the light and make it part of our own story. Christmas is made real in the intersection of the light illuminating the darkness, in the past to becoming the present, in the incarnation being a message to all people that God isn't for some, for a chosen or select, but for all people. And the encounter, the encounter with the light is deeply personal, an invitation to understand God's willingness to come close and that impacts and changes our life in the present. We can no longer continue to just rehearse a time-told story and hope that something happens. We must, in turn, make the translation for ourselves and a new way of living in the world. For God is up to something in the midst of chaos, challenge, change. Last week, as we were in worship, we sang a hymn called Twas in the Moon of Winter Time. The hymn text was written by a French Jesuit named Jean Barbeau. He was trying to find his way to tell the story of the incarnation, the coming of Jesus Christ. And the way he was telling it, that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, was simply not working. So he started to tell the story to the people living along Lake Superior in this way. It was in the noon of winter time when all the birds had fled. The mighty Gitche Manitou sent angel choirs instead. Before their light, the stars grew dim, and wandering hunters heard the hymn. Within a lodge of broken bark, the tender babe was found, a ragged robe of rabbit skinned and wrapped his beauty round. And as the hunter's graves drew nigh, the angel's song rang loud and high. The holy child of earth and heaven is born today for you. Come kneel before the radiant boy who brings you beauty, peace, and joy. The incarnation coming of Jesus, the word became flesh and moved into your neighborhood. It must become part of your story in a way that makes sense. As Jean Barbeau found a way to tell the story to the people living along Lake Superior, the incarnation takes shape when we shed light and let that light penetrate within us so that we can be part of the change we can be made real and see our own image in Jesus. Our images of Jesus need to come to a close so that in order for us to make way for what God is doing, how the Spirit is moving within us to help change be made real, not only in 2022, but in our own life. The light in the darkness comes when we open ourselves to the way that Jesus comes close to us in the here and now. When the story is integrated into living, into our own living, the images are not so disconnected with a past that we cannot always understand, but come into true meaning into what we are faced with in the present. When we allow ourselves to see how Jesus comes as a neighbor, knocking on our door, inviting us to come and sit for a while, we see the holy, we see the holy sharing as well as the light that comes through as an encounter, an encounter with who we are today and who we are becoming in the year to come. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for joining in worship today, and as you go out into this day, may you find ways to not only find the light, the word that became flesh and lived with us, that moved into our neighborhood, but may you also share that light with others that you encounter. And so in this radical exchange, Christ is made known, Christ is made real, 
in and through you and the interactions you share with others in this beautiful and wondrous and mysterious humanity that we live in together. Amen. <laughs>